Hi everyone. On September 4th, the Holy Orthodox Church celebrates the beloved memory of Hermione, the virgin martyr. Now, Hermione was one of the four daughters of the holy apostle and deacon Philip. The Philip who in the eighth chapter of the book of the Acts of the Apostles baptized uh, one of the Ethiopian eunuchs of Queen Candace. Now, Hermione apparently also had the gift of prophecy, as it is also mentioned later on in the book of Acts that all four of Philip's daughters had this gift. Well, at the time, she was looking out for the holy apostle John. She wanted to find him in order to receive instruction, because at this time, all of the apostles, of course, had scattered and gone different ways. But as it turns out, the holy apostle was translated at that point into the heavenly realms, having achieved the end of his earthly life. So she could not find him anywhere. But instead, she came upon one of the disciples of St. Paul the Apostle and spent a number of years with him, learning at his feet, trying to receive instruction, trying to uh, grow in our Lord Jesus Christ in the manner that so many of these early biblical personages did. Well, the Emperor Trajan at that time was going to war against the Persians. And he had heard of Hermione and had her brought before him. And of course, he had realized that she had become a, a Christian and Trajan was no friend of the Christians. And so after the usual enticements to change her mind, uh, she said no, of course, that she was not going uh, to do this. And so Trajan had her beat for hours in the face but Hermione endured all of this. And Trajan actually, having been so impressed with her ability to take what he was dishing out and of her own beliefs, let her go. So Hermione at that time actually became uh, an innkeeper. And many people would come to her because she also practiced the art of medicine. And they would flock to her at this inn, always receiving the warmest hospitality and good instruction and many times healings of the problems that they were having. Well, the successor to Trajan was the Emperor Hadrian, again, no friend of Christians. And at this point, he also, of course, had heard of Hermione and heard her, had her brought before him yet again, for the second time, a second appearance before an emperor. And he also enticed her with these same sorts of uh, things that uh, Trajan had said. But yet he also asked her in these words, old woman, where are you from? And who are you? And what is your age? And Hermione answered him, my Lord Jesus Christ knows my age and my origin. And Hadrian exploded at this point. Oh. He said, listen, how dare you speak to an emperor in this manner? And so he had her taken and then beaten and beaten and beaten for hours and hours. Whereupon Hermione, who surviving it and praying the entire time, was brought back before Hadrian again. And this time, though, he wasn't finished. He had her feet pierced with wires. And then finally, because she was still obstinate in his eyes, he had a great cauldron set with pitch and with sulfur and had her dipped down into it. But lo and behold, just as the three holy children experienced many, many, many years before, nothing happened to Hermione. And in fact, the cauldron overflowed and completely emptied except for her inside it. And during this time, she actually had a vision of our Lord Jesus Christ who comforted her in all of this and encouraged her to be strong. Well, Hadrian wasn't done yet. And so he formed a great giant skillet for her to literally be roasted in alive and completely naked. He had her thrown into it. 
but there was a great sound, almost like an explosion. And she was left unharmed, and she confronted him and said, Look, I am still okay, thanks to my Lord Jesus Christ, who is helping me because of the accusations that you are making against me. Hadrian was not easily dissuaded in any of this, however. Although he was fearful because of the things that he had seen, and in fact, he felt the heat from the skillet himself, whereas she did not, he finally had her taken out and ordered that she be beheaded for her disobedience, her obstinacy, and also for the fact that she was so rude to the sitting emperor. Well, two of the men that were taking Hermione out to be beheaded found as they were hurrying to get the task done that their hands became paralyzed and they could not move. And so they begged the saint at that time, please forgive us for what we are doing and what we have done. Allow us, because we've come to believe in the Lord that you profess, allow us now to simply die in peace. And Hermione said, by the Lord's will, may it be done. And so these two, like the thief on the cross, found their way into a good end into the kingdom of heaven after trying to follow orders to do a really dastardly deed to the martyr. Well, as it turns out, after all these sufferings, Hermione herself also lied down and gave her soul up to God. Many came and collected her relics and deposited them in a church in the city of Ephesus, where, of course, she had originally been seeking to find St. John the Theologian. It's often amazing to us when we hear these stories that something like this could actually happen. Yet we read about it in the Old Testament, like I mentioned about the three holy children in the fire, and there's other many examples as well of those being preserved by the power of God. But for the early Christians, they were given these extraordinary gifts so that they might testify to the power of our Lord Jesus Christ so that the faith would spread. So we see that the holy apostle Philip did a good job in raising his four daughters and especially of the holy virgin martyr Hermione who by her intercessions, may we all make a good witness before our Lord Jesus Christ. Bye-bye.